Hey everyone, it's Pacific. Just a few pieces of information, and then this week's weird, wacky, and wonderful episode. First, we now have a premium subscription offer on Apple Podcast. As always, you can still subscribe to our show and get ad-free and bonus content on patreon.com slash scp underscore pod. But now there's also a new way to support the show. You can also get ad-free and bonus content on Apple Podcasts. And the best part is, you can try 7 days free right now. Second, we're a part of the Bloody Disgusting Podcast Network, which is the home to amazing horror content. And this week, I want to tell you about one of our shows, The Losers Club. The Losers Club is a must-listen to podcast for any Stephen King fan. Every week, they delve into his books, movie adaptations, TV shows, comics, and more. If you tune into the Losers Club right now, you can catch an absurd and epic audio drama based on a boatload of different Stephen King properties. It's written as the first episode of the third season of Hulu's now-canceled show, Castle Rock. It features over 12 voices, amazing editing and sound design, and more Stephen King Easter eggs than you can count. To listen, simply search The Losers Club wherever you listen to podcasts, or check our show notes for a link to their newest episode. And that's it for this week. So without further ado, this week's episode. Warning. The Foundation database is classified. Unauthorized access will result in detainment. Within this archive, you'll find the procedures, descriptions, and accounts of the most notorious anomalies we've encountered to date. Secure. Contain. Protect. Item number. SCP-1233. Containment Class. Keter. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-1233's anomalous physical properties all but preclude the possibility of primary containment, and as such, secondary containment measures are considered adequate until a feasible method of physical containment is devised. Foundation Satellite Observation Network Argos is to enter Priority 2 High Alert status three years and six months following the last observed SCP-1233 departure event. When Argos detects SCP-1233 in the upper thermosphere, Contingent from any nearby covert amnestization and disinformation mobile task force will be dispatched to the population center closest to the terminus of SCP-1233's descent trajectory. After the entity's departure from Earth orbit, all appearances of and damages caused by SCP-1233 are to be accounted for, with a suitable cover story in conjunction with media blackout, and any civilians having witnessed any overt display of SCP-1233's anomalous effects are to be amnestized at MTF discretion. Mass memory wipes of the affected city may be authorized in the event of unusually prolonged SCP-1233 appearances. Update. October 5, 2017. Under no circumstances are Foundation personnel permitted to intercept with or engage SCP-1233 in any capacity. Description. SCP-1233 is a humanoid entity of unknown composition which visually resembles an individual wearing an EMU-type spacesuit with opaque visor and attached extravehicular propulsion jetpack. The equipment worn by SCP-1233 exhibits a numerous of anomalous properties. The suit itself has shown durability far exceeding that of standard spacesuit. SCP-1233 has, to date, withstood small arms fire, anti-tank munitions, landmines, white phosphorus munitions, and in one instance, total submersion in magma without sustaining any observable damage or decrease in functionality. The suit material is also opaque to all attempted forms of penetrating scans, up to and including ultrasonic, radio, microwave, and x-ray emitters. The entity's jetpack, while ostensibly designed to be practical only in low-gravity orbital conditions and powered by compressed nitrogen, instead appears to utilize some form of anomalously high-powered rock propulsion system. This device can sustainably generate thrust capable of rapidly accelerating the entity to a maximum observed velocity of approximately 40,500 km per hour. It can alter SCP-1233's trajectory in any direction at speeds and rates of acceleration and deceleration that would be instantly fatal to any human. SCP-1233's physical strength is correspondingly anomalous. It has demonstrated the ability to lift and throw objects weighing up to 65,000 kilograms and can do so repeatedly without showing any external signs of fatigue. 
in defiance of multiple physical laws. SCP-1233 is capable of communicating through a loudspeaker installed in its suit, and does so in a loud, somewhat grandiloquent, and declamatory male voice, demonstrating fluency in a number of languages and adjusting its speech to conform with whatever language is most commonly spoken by the surrounding populace. Its statements are generally coherent in structure, but are frequently rambling, oblique, irrelevant to the present situation, or lacking discernible context. SCP-1233's behavior is erratic, unpredictable, gregarious, cordial, and somewhat destructive, though its appearances are typically brief and infrequent, with sightings occurring once per four to five years. An SCP-1233 arrival event will begin with the entity falling from an unknown height above the Earth's surface, generally at a terminal velocity comparable to that of a small meteorite or atmospheric re-entry vehicle. SCP-1233 will exhibit the red-orange thermal radiance typical of these objects as a result of atmospheric friction. And as such, SCP-1233 is commonly mistaken for a meteorite or shooting star during its descent. It will then crash land, causing a minor localized seismic event and a sizable impact crater. In almost all cases, SCP-1233 has landed a moderate distance away from the outer limits of a population center, usually a small to mid-sized town with a population not exceeding 30,000. It will then climb out of the crater and travel toward the nearby town either via flight or on foot. Its route to the population center is usually not direct. SCP-1233 will frequently stop to engage in various activities, seemingly random. Examples of observed detour behaviors include inspecting various objects, such as farm equipment, building, and plants, standing still for variable amounts of time, chasing small insects such as grasshoppers and butterflies, attempting to greet, converse with, or interrogate animals such as livestock and birds, pulling up root vegetables or picking fruit from bushes and trees and pressing them forcefully into its closed visor in an apparent attempt to eat them, marching directly into bodies of water such as ponds and lakes among others, normally not resulting in significant property damage. Upon reaching the town limits, SCP-1233 will engage in further activities which, due to its curiosity, appearance, extreme physical strength, and lack of understanding of human societal conversations will generally result in civil unrest and destruction of public and private property. The following video transcript provides a typical example of SCP-1233 interaction with the local populace. Archived Media Date, August 9, 2009 Media Origin Security camera footage confiscated from Sam's Suites, a bakery and cafe located in downtown Saratoga Springs, New York, USA. SCP-1233 opens front door and enters cafe. Behind the counter is an overweight, bearded man identified as Bob Parsons, 32, co-owner of the establishment. Parsons raises his eyebrows upon SCP-1233's entry. Holy crap, dude. It's like 90 degrees out there. I get being dedicated to your cosplay and all that, but god damn. SCP-1233 approaches the register and salutes briefly. Greetings, little girl. I am Moon Champion, champion of the moon, defender of space justice, and destroyer of evil. I have once again come to your charming world to learn more of your strange culture and to seek aid for my people in their ongoing war against the moon monsters. You appear to possess a vast wealth of the fabled nutrients and moisture for which this world is known throughout the galaxy. Are you the president of this planet? Parson pauses before <laughs> laughing uproariously for approximately a minute and reaches into a display case below the counter while wiping tears from his eyes. Holy fuck, man. That's the funniest shit I've ever heard in, like, at least a year. What's up, Moon Champion? I'm Bob, and you get a free cookie for making me bust a gut so hard, I thought I was gonna puke up my own spine. Here. Parsons offers a cookie to SCP-1233. The entity takes it from the shopkeeper. I see. Yes, I, Moon Champion, accept this small bird on behalf of the moon and solemnly pledge to use the energy it provides to advance the cause of righteousness. 
SCP-1233 rams the cookie into its unopened visor. The impact instantly destroys the confection and forcefully scatters crumbs in all directions. The baker laughs again and begins <laughs> eating a cookie of his own. Nah, it's cool, Moon Bro. I'll just clean that up later. Don't worry about it or anything. So there's monsters, huh? On the moon? And, y and you fight them? Your understanding of the situation is flawless, my lord. Yes, the dreaded moon monsters have plagued and besieged my people for countless millennia. They are very terrible. Merely attempting to describe them to you would cause your human organs to shrivel in a horror. And it is my sacred duty as Moon Champion to meet these nightmarish beasts in combat and lead the Moon people in the defense of their imperiled homeland, the majestic and magnificent Moon Kingdom. Parsons continues eating his cookie and nods. Oh, so you're like one of these alien dudes. They're their king or something. <laughs> no. I am not one of the moon people. I am moon champion! I will continue to serve the moon people and wage glorious war against their enemies and send my debt to the moon king is repaid. But the moon kingdom is a land of peace and enlightenment. The moon people having abandoned the pettiness of violence and bloodshed eons ago. They are ill-prepared for the sudden advent of such a formidable foe, and the conflict goes poorly despite the valiant efforts of me, MOON CHAMPION! And so, I have come once more to Earth, our closest neighbor, to seek whatever assistance lies within your damp, meaty arms. Throughout this monologue, SCP-1233's right arm has risen into the air gradually until its hand is outstretched above its head. Parsons points at it. Do, do you, uh, have a question? Yes, several. To start, are these copies you have capable of withstanding the vacuum of space without additional shielding? I would like to befriend one and name her Moon Pop and take her with me on space adventures. Your arm, dude. SCP-1233 pauses, then turns its head to look at its arm. It has become buoyant, an aspect of your mighty balloons. Another common side effect of your Earth atmosphere is similar to electricity and swarms of locusts. Either that, or there are laser beasts within this quadrant. I have studied the Earth quite extensively. Its phenomena are disgusting and incredible. Huh? Now! Lord President Mayor of Earth, will you answer the Moon King's call and assist us in our desperate battle against the Moon Monsters? Time is of the essence. Time waits for no Moon Champion. I have asked it nicely. It did not listen. Oh. Uh, so like, as you can see, Moon Dude, as President, I have, uh, responsibilities. This uh, supply depot here is the only source of food for my people, and I gotta, like, stay here. Otherwise, there'll be a famine. You know how it is. But I've ordered the citizens to lend a helping hand to anyone who asks, and, uh, uh look. Right outside, there's some. SCP-1233 turns to look out the glass door, where there are passers-by visible. Yes, of course. You have been most voluptuous, my liege. Farewell, glorious and corpulent president. May you and your people remain moist and rubbery. Moon champion blasts off on the wings of justice. SCP-1233 salutes once more, turns about, and marches forward, crashing directly through a section of concrete wall less than ten feet from the establishment entrance. Other observed behaviors have included wandering into traffic, which due to its anomalous properties has resulted in lethal collisions, breaking through glass storefronts to handle or inspect wares on display, challenging a fire hydrant to single combat, which it then destroyed via punching, 
stealing and gathering unattended bicycles, forming a pile of hundreds in the center of a public park, stacking parked cars on top of one another, collecting as many dogs as possible and attempting to use them as currency to purchase more dogs, and more. SCP-1233's exploits invariably result in the local authorities being summoned by the citizenry. However, attempts by police to impede, detain, or arrest SCP-1233 are entirely ineffective and are ignored by the entity in the majority of cases. To date, SCP-1233 has not caused overt and deliberate harm to any civilian, though casualties and fatalities have occurred as a result of its unpredictable behavior and physical properties. After spending a variable amount of time within a given municipality, SCP-1233 will abruptly activate its jetpack and ascend directly upward, reaching escape velocity and exiting Earth's atmosphere with greater speed than any non-anomalous vehicle on record. Ground-based and orbital telescope observations of recent SCP-1233's departures have shown that its general outbound trajectory is consistent during each event. SCP-1233 exits Earth orbit and maintains velocity while adjusting course directly toward the moon. At its average speed of roughly 40,500 km per hour, the entity enters lunar orbit within approximately 9 hours. It will overshoot slightly and adjust course, passing out of view and presumably either demanifesting somehow or landing on the far side of the moon. None of SCP-1233's claims regarding the moon have been successfully verified. Since SCP-1233's initial appearance on February 6, 1986, Foundation research divisions have maintained constant surveillance of the moon in an attempt to acquire concrete proof of its statements. No evidence indicating the existence of a moon kingdom, moon people, moon monsters, or any other moon-based extra-normal objects or entities mentioned by SCP-1233 has ever been found. Terrestrial research personnel have maintained continual contact with Lunar Area 32 Provisional Research Station supervisors concerning all aspects of SCP-1233 since its initial registry hypothesizing that Area 32's powerful and comprehensive Sentinel Array would be capable of confirming or refuting SCP-1233's allegations with ease. Not only have lunar-based personnel consistently failed to uncover any indication that SCP-1233's assertions are authentic in any way, but no anomaly or object matching SCP-1233's description has ever been recorded by Sentinel's hundreds of detectors. Despite the existence of a multitude of Earth-based telescopic video recordings, which clearly show SCP-1233 entering the inner bound of Sentinel's optimal sensor range and flying directly over Lunar Area 32. Lunar personnel were only made aware of the entity's existence in the SCP registry upon Terrestrial Command's request that they transmit all data concerning SCP-1233's first appearance to Earth for storage and analysis three hours following the entity's disappearance. No such data existed. No definitive explanation for this observational discrepancy has been found. Addendum 1233-01 During SCP-1233's most recent arrival event on October 5, 2017, SCP-1233 addressed Harry Goodsall in downtown Hereford, England. SCP-1233 approached Goodsall and asked him if he'd be willing to join the fight against the moon monsters. As opposed to each observed iteration of its interaction thus far, in which the civilian petition by SCP-1233 either disregards the question or answers in the negative. Goods all sardonically replied, Oh, absolutely, you fucking nut. I'm ready to go right now. Got my toothbrush and everything. Let's fly, spaceman. At last, a great warrior hiding in plain sight amidst these pastoral and bucolic humans. Let us obey their meat fellow and earn the glory of heroes. This day you brussel toast amongst the stars. We fly! The entity lurched forward and embraced Goodsall, then activated its jetpack. The resultant sonic boom shattered every item of glassware within a 300 meter radius as SCP-1233 accelerated to a projected velocity of 25,000 kilometers per hour within approximately 4 seconds, ascending into low orbit with goods all in tow. Due to the unexpected timing of this event, observational satellites were unable to properly focus upon SCP-1233 during the early stages of its exit trajectory. As such, goods all's presence and status were unable to be visually confirmed. After the amnestization of all Hereford citizens witnessing this event, Goodsall was officially declared missing, then pronounced dead three months later. The condition and whereabouts of his remains are currently unknown. Hey 
Hey everyone, Pacific here with a quick reminder. For uninterrupted listening, consider supporting us on patreon.com slash scp underscore pod or by subscribing to our premium feed on Apple Podcasts. And now, back to the show. Item number SCP-4233 Containment Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-4233's anomalous physical properties all but preclude the possibility of primary containment, and as such, secondary containment measures are considered adequate until a feasible method of physical containment is devised. All appearances of SCP-4233 are to be accounted for with a suitable cover story in conjunction with media blackout, and any civilians having witnessed an overt display of SCP-4233's anomalous effects are to be amnestitized at MTF discretion. Foundation Listening Network, Panopticon, is reminded to alert Foundation Executive Command of the credible appearance of any and all Leviathans, and NTF Sigma-58, Bottom Feeders, stands ordered to track SCP-4233's trajectory and establish radio contact as often as possible to aid in the discovery of any such seagoing bioforms. Description SCP-4233 is an amphibious humanoid entity of unknown origin and composition that exhibits potent anomalous properties and operates under an unclear agenda. SCP-4233 physically resembles a human in a late 19th century diving suit with a rigid copper helmet with glass viewing window and weighted boots. However, SCP-4233's body plan is disproportionate and larger overall than that of a baseline human. The entity stands at approximately 2.5 meters when fully upright, with an exaggerated torso supporting thick, oversized arms, resulting in a somewhat simian appearance. Each time it has appeared, SCP-4233 has carried a large, stockless anchor, approximately 1.8 meters in length and weighing an estimated 550 kilograms. This anchor is thoroughly corroded and encrusted with barnacles and other sessile sea life consistent with roughly 75 years of continuous exposure to marine environment. It bears this item on its right shoulder, and to date has not been observed to use this object for any discernible purpose. SCP-4233's primary anomalous properties lie in its physical and mechanical attributes. Its suit is opaque to all known forms of penetrative electromagnetic imaging and has thus far proven to be entirely impervious to damage. The extent of its durability and physical strength have proven difficult to quantify. Across its many appearances since its first in 1953, SCP-4233 has accepted direct strikes from high-explosive anti-tank munitions, surface-to-surface missile systems, and a full broadside shore bombardment from an Iowa-class battleship without suffering any noticeable damage or impaired movement. It has disregarded any and all attempts at physical containment, typically by walking directly through any barricades or impediments placed in its path and ignoring the efforts of intercepting strike teams attempting to prevent or slow its advance. The entity's appearances are erratic and follow no observable pattern, but its behavior is consistent and predictable. SCP-4233 emergence events begin with the entity walking out of the sea and onto a beach or stretch of coastline, chosen apparently at random and with no regard for any civilian presence. SCP-4233 has to date arrived on the coasts of California, Virginia, Scotland, Nova Scotia, Greenland, Thailand, Australia, Chile, Japan, Namibia, Oman, and the Kamchatka Peninsula, among others. Once on land, SCP-4233 will continue walking at a gradual pace, slightly less than 5 kilometers per hour, in a straight line, only altering its trajectory to avoid injuring civilians, animals, and large plants such as trees. It has not been seen to stop or change pace at any point, and will often simply walk through and subsequently destroy objects in its way, such as fallen logs, unattended vehicles, boulders, and abandoned buildings. It will continue on its set path and walk forward until it reaches the ocean, occasionally crossing entire continents over a period of months in order to do so. Upon reaching the coast, it will stop, set down its anchor, clap its hands together once, replace its anchor, then continue, walking into the sea until it disappears from view. 
To date, SCP-4233's path has not crossed any major population centers. It has traveled within five kilometers of small villages or towns on only three occasions, in 1964, 1972, and 1998, but did not enter the town's limits, nor did it interact with any investigating civilians or law enforcement personnel in any way. It is currently unclear whether this is due to coincidence or deliberate planning on SCP-4233's part. Addendum 4233-1 on December 1, 2017, as SCP-4233 approached the eastern coast of Baffin Island, operatives from the Naval Task Force Sigma-58 bottom feeders tracking SCP-4233 began to receive a low-fidelity radio transmission of a deep male voice humming the tune of the traditional sea shanty, What Shall We Do With a Drunken Sailor? Triangulation quickly confirmed that SCP-4233 was the source of this transmission. This was the first known instance of SCP-4233 producing electromagnetic signals of any kind, and NTF Sigma-58 were able to subsequently isolate SCP-4233's transmission frequency in an authorized attempt to establish contact with the entity. Resultant communication transcript follows below. Date. December 1st, 2017. Location. Approximately one kilometer from eastern shoreline of Baffin Island, Canada. Interview conducted from NTF Sigma 58 Pursuit and Reconnaissance Truck at a distance of three kilometers from SCP-4233. SCP-4233's broadcast signal is isolated with stability, and the entity's humming is clearly heard, although the signal is relatively low quality and tinny. NTF Sigma-58 operative Sergeant Kendra Hill initiates verbal contact upon receiving clearance from Sigma-58 Tactical Command. Testing 1-2. This is Sergeant Kendra Hill of Foundation Task Force Sigma-58, hailing undesignated entity at transmitting on this frequency. Is this channel receiving? The humming stops. There is a moment of silence, interspersed with slight static, which clears. SCP-4233 responds in English. Mm. New friends in the air today. I receive you, Miss Hill, as I receive your superiors. It is a good day for a swim, I think. <laughs> Who are you? Inquisitive. But that answer is long, and you've caught me with a little time to spare. Words and boxes are your great loves, and all love should be respected. But words wash away from me, and I am my own box, such as it can be. In time and tide. What are you? Peace and wait. Part and parcel. I am my own slow way. In water and iron. I am the crushing wave. I am the calm of the deep. And the great pressure on the bones. The following question from Sergeant Hill is in deviation from the standardized list of questions provided to personnel in the event of an encounter with an anomalous sentient entity. Where are you going? To walk along the bottom and look up through the waves. I find that my vision is best through all the salt. Mother winds and the grass have their own charms. When most of your life is darkness and mud, a flower is a genuine treasure. The depths have no eye for art. Kelp is not as interesting as it may seem. Sergeant Hill is admonished for deviating from standardized conduct protocol 
but permitted to continue her line of questioning. Is there something you're looking for? There is. My brother. His signal is hard to find. So I must wander for a good spot. So he can hear me. Who is your brother? You have written of him in your lightning books. He appears in a white suit like mine. Though his is white and made for the void, not the water. My elder brother, the champion of the moon. He is very swift in the sky and very strong and often very silly. But he has been very, very silly lately. I wish to speak with him. He does not know I am calling him, I think. He has a hard time paying attention to things. Why is it so important that you speak with him? I wish to know if his stories are true, or if he's playing another of his games. If true, I wish to help him. If not, I will ask him for his help instead. All life came from the sea, Missile. Other things came from it too, and I must keep them from leaving. It would be very terrible if they did. I fight well at the bottom. My steel sinks heavy death upon these creatures. But times change. They change very quickly. And though I am strong, I am slow. My brother moves with the speed of a thunderbolt and strikes like the justice he so loves. He would be a great help. And sometimes his jokes are funny. Funnier than mine, at the least. <laughs> Is there any way we can help? You don't have to do all of this alone. We're strong, in our own way, you know. Your spirit is as strong as your great ancestors. But though you may wish to stop me, this is where my destiny flows. I will fight on, and win the war in the depths. My great weight will crush the foe. The waters will be still at last. And all peoples above will breathe easy, as I cannot. For now, I descend alone. SCP-4233 has reached the shoreline. Sigma-58 cameras observe the entity stop and place its anchor into the shallow water at its side. I don't understand. Is going alone really necessary? Do you have to? You could just give us the information. We all must flow through our ways and bear our own burdens. You are yours. I am mine. Lay your noble guns to rest and quiet your battle songs. Turn from the shore and stand in the warmth of the great sun. You will be safe. Though they mass in shrink groves, no foul leviathan shall draw breath beneath the weight of my mighty anchor. For I am... Sea Champion. Wait, 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 wait. What exactly? SCP-4233 advances into the water, and radio contact is lost. (laughs) 
This episode is made possible thanks to our newest patrons, like George Nesbitt, Lily, Arsenal, Justin Wood, Brandon White, Diana, Thoughtfully Violent Comb, Jace Petch, Micah Cheek, and Sai Chang. SCP-1233 and SCP-4233 were written by Cadaver Commander. Our host and narrator was John Grills. Parsons was Atticus Jackson. SCP-1233 was Alvin Bowling II. Godzall was Karim Cronfley. Our second narrator was Graham Rowett. Sergeant Hill was Risa M. And SCP-4233 was Brandon Wynn. Our assistant editors are Jesse Hall and Danny Sweet, and our music is all done by the incredible Tom Rory Parsons. I'm your sound designer and showrunner, Pacific S. Obadiah, and our producers are Tom Owen and Brad Miska. And this is a bloody disgusting podcast. <laughs>